When I was eight years old, I saw the first Transformers film at home. My mum and dad brought it home from the store. They bought it for me and it was my first ever Transformers item that I owned. And seeing the Transformers on my TV at home for the first time was the best experience that I could ever ask for. Since then, I have grown up with the Michael Bay films and really got an attachment to them. Every Transformers fan has that attachment, whether it's Armada, Cybertron, Transformers Animated, the Michael Bay films, G1, Beast Wars, anything. Everyone has their first experience, everyone has their personal story with Transformers and this is mine. And I've always had a connection to the Babers. Now a lot of people say that you know the Bayfirst, they're they're really bad films, they don't know anything about Transformers, but for me it's had a connection to me my entire life. And the thing is Optimus Prime in those films, other characters as well, but especially Optimus Prime, they've all had an emotional connection to him in a very deep level and a lot of people say the character development isn't great in the films but the thing is one this films are expensive and two the screen time that the characters do have is just incredible it's absolutely incredible the amount of character development the Transformers have in the Michael Bay films is phenomenal you might sit there and take it as a face value and think no the Michael Bay interpretations are rubbish but the thing is if you compare the first Transformers film of Optimus to the fifth film The Last Night, he is two totally different characters and that is a good character development. Optimus goes through so many different emotions he goes especially if you explore the the books and the comics that tie into the films whether you consider them canon or not for me they are but especially if you incorporate them. The first film Optimus is dealing with the fact that he sent the old spark away from Cybertron and he's potentially doomed his planet that he was trying to protect. Second film, Optimus is trying to integrate more with society, but part of the government is rejecting him and his team despite his best effort and then he deals with his own death and comes back from that. The third film, Optimus learns about the humans have you know keeping secrets from the Transformers. And then he has his mentor and then finds out that his mentor who trained him has teamed up with Megatron, his arch nemesis who was also his brother at one point. So he deals with a lot of betrayal, but still he comes back and he saves the day. He saves Earth. And then in Aid of Extinction he deals with the fact that all these people he's tried to protect are turning against him, but there's still a couple who are willing to help him, like Cade. Tessa and Shane and he starts to see the good in humanity and then the fifth film comes in and Quintessa just really throws just really throws Optimus off she guilt trips him influences and possesses him into Nemesis Prime and then Optimus once again has to deal with the emotions he dealt with in the first film but also combined with the second third and fourth film all in one and really Optimus in those films he has such a deep, such a deep emotional level that it's, regardless what you think of the Bayverse, this cannot be ignored. Optimus is so emotional and he does have a lot of anger, but if you read, you know, if you read the comics, if you study his psychology, it makes, it, it makes sense. It really makes sense. He deals with the death of his close ones, such as Elita One. He deals with the death of Ironhide, Ratchet, and really a lot of these deaths are either um, indirectly because of his actions, or they are at the actions of someone he trusted. Now, the reason why I'm saying all this is because it's had such an impact on me. Now, I used to watch the Bay films constantly, and around six months ago I took a break and that was for one reason and one reason only. I wanted to take a break and then watch all the films before I meet Peter Cullen. You might think, why would I do that? Firstly, 
I feel if you have a break and don't watch something, when you re-watch it, you will relive the nostalgia and notice things you didn't notice before, where, you know, if you just watch it constantly, you might notice a couple of things, but if you go a long time without watching it, you might think, oh, I remember this, or, oh, I noticed this, this is new, or what I didn't notice before. Um, for example, on, a, on an emotional level, do you know that Bumblebee is self-conscious about his image? You might think, yeah, of course, the first film when he scans a new form. But on a deep level, Bumblebee is really self-conscious about how he looks and acts. I can do a video on that if you want. So yeah, I rewatched the, the films like six months after I re last watched them and they weren't as good as I thought. They were even better. They were absolutely smashed all my um the opinions i had about the film they just smashed it they were really good again despite what you think this is my opinion these are the films that have impacted me and this is my version of optimus prime i love absolutely every version of optimus prime they are all perfect I think one reason why I resonate so much with Optimus Prime in the Michael Bay films is he does have a lot of anger, but it's how he controls that and how he manages it that really inspires me. And especially because he handles so much deep trauma that he comes back from it every single time. Now from people that I've heard have met Peter Cullen, everyone says he's real he's really gentle and he was just a, such a nice, gentle soul and very genuine. I expected him to be that, but when I spoke to him, he was so much more than I expected. I, I mean, my, my expectations were high anyway, but he was... It took me off guard how... Um, I don't know. I knew he was nice and very kind and gentle, but I was really thrown off. It was like, the one way I can describe this is when we did the call, me and Peter had a connection. And I'm not trying to sound egotistical saying that, that's genuinely how I felt. I felt me and Peter Cullen had a moment that I will carry me for the rest of my life. The call that I had on GalaxyCon was meant to last two minutes. And there was the, apparently there was like a timer. So I expected to go in and see like a two minute timer. Um, and when I went, there was no timer. And I, I was I said like one thing, and then it said like 15 seconds left. I'm like, what? What? And then it went 14, 13, 12, 11. I'm like, oh no. And then the timer just disappeared, and I'm like, oh, maybe it's a glitch. Then it appeared again, counted down again from 15, disappeared, came on again, and I'm like, what is going on? I didn't say that, but in my head I'm like, well, why, why, why is the timer just keep resetting itself? Um, and it got to the point where I'm like, I could talk all day, but I'm sure my two minutes is up. And when, when I got the call, when I downloaded the video, it was six minutes. Well, five minutes, 53, 54 seconds, but six minutes. I was... To, the, to, to Peter Cullen, and I don't know who it was who was in the room with me, who took the photo and like let me in and out of the room. But to that person and Peter Cullen, I just want to say, I had two minutes to change my life. And the fact that it wasn't just like, hey, how are you? And then I kind of like got my two minutes and then was done. You know, you know, like if I just joined, said what I want to say, and it's like, okay, two minutes, bye, Daniel. That's it. I, I mean, I didn't expect that, but you, you get what I mean, like two minutes and then it cut off. Where this kept going and it wasn't... The thing that made it more special is I think Pete knew that the two minutes was up, but he he kept talking and he kept asking me questions and I felt like I felt Pete wanted to talk to me more. 
and again, I'm not trying to sound egotistical saying that or, or boost my ego or anything like that, but that's how I felt. It, it truly felt like Peter Cullen wanted to talk to me for longer than the two minutes. And I think that the guy who was, you know, again, managing the technical side and letting me in and out of the room and taking the photograph, I felt like he was kind of extending the timer because he knew that, you know, Peter Cullen was happy to continue talking to me. And I just want to say to Peter, and if somehow he watches this video, and say to um, the person who was on the technical side, extending an extra four minutes got out everything I wanted to say to Peter Cullen. I've waited 14 years and it really, really got out everything I wanted to say and though I, my, my expectation was two minutes and I got six and I cannot say how grateful I am for those few mi extra few minutes. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you. It's funny because I almost had tunnel vision talk as Peter Cullen. It was like, I got on the call, because I, I thought I was going to just freak out and get nervous. I was nervous, but it was like, as soon as I got on the call, I just had tunnel vision. And like Peter was at the end of the tunnel, and I was just racing towards him, saying everything I needed to say. <laughs> so I think I held myself together pretty well. There were a couple of minutes when I think I accidentally interrupted him, <laughs> and I, I didn't realise at first. It wasn't until I watched back, and my sister pointed it out to me. Um, there, there were a few of times when I thought, "Oh, I probably shouldn't have spoke then. I accidentally cut him off." But um, I, ca I, I kind of told myself that if Peter was going to say something to me specifically, if he had something he wanted to say, because he did have a, a good minute or so when he spoke, I do feel he would have said what he wanted to say in those few minutes. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping that's the case, fingers crossed. Um, it's funny as well because I actually forgot about the photo because normally it's kind of like you get in the call and it's like, let's have a photo, you smile for the photo, you say what you got to say and it's that's two minutes. Whereas when I got in, it was like I did it in reverse. I got in, I spoke straight away. Um, and then towards the end of the call, Peter was asking me where I was calling from. Um, and then he was like, we've got to have a photo. And I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot about the photo. I totally forgot about that. Um, but the, you know, the thing is, this was on my bucket list because no one knows when your time's up. I could be well, I hope not. Knock, wood, knock on wood, but touch wood. You know, anything can happen today. Any, anything can happen to me tomorrow. Next year, you, you never know. So, meeting Peter Cullen was on my bucket list. But the thing is, now Peter said uh, he wants to meet me at a convention. So now it's like my bucket list. It's like Peter's unlocked a little side quest that I have to meet him at a convention. <laughs> Now one, one more thing that I want to say before I actually show the, the, the video of me and Peter Cullen is I do get deep right at the start to Peter Cullen and mental health is something that I've never really spoke about whether it's on the channel or in person I never really speak about it um, maybe one day I will as of now, I just kind of ask, just ask that the people watching this, whether you're friends, uh, subscribers, viewers, or even my family somehow watching this, I ask that you kind of re respect, respect what I'm saying here. But I just want to thank like every single one of you because I've never, I've graduated university and I mean I'm not I'm not an idiot but I don't consider myself to be massively intelligent on certain aspects such as like say if you went in like science or um, 
but physics or something, you know, I'm not one of these brainy people who know absolutely everything. I feel my intelligence lies in my emotions, you know, like emotionally intelligent. Again, I'm, I'm not, I mean, I, I studied psychology, but I'm not a psychologist, but I feel I understand emotions on a deep level. So if someone came to me and said, I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling like this, I feel I would be able to empathize with them uh, and really understand how they feel. And that's something I bring to my stop motion because sometimes there's going to be times where characters have a low point and I really use my experiences in life to write into that character, uh, write them into a situation that I've been in. Maybe the character reacts the same way that I did, maybe they say things I should have said, maybe they say things that I did say and I said it wrong. It's a good way to, I guess, therapize, <laughs> therapize myself, um, and it's a really big backbone of my universe because it's not just Transformers blasting Transformers. I mean, I love filming the fight scenes, don't get me wrong, um, but I'm really trying to bring, I'm, with my universe, I'm trying to bring a deep level of emotion to it and the support that everyone has shown me I want to say that it's incredible and I cannot thank each and every one of you enough so if you made it this far I want to say thank you and I'm just going to leave you with the meeting of Peter Quillen. I appreciate this was a little bit of a long video, but for me, I didn't want this video to be like a quick two minutes saying like, hey, here's here's what I, what I uh, you know, here's what I want to say before you see me and Peter Cullen talk to each other um, and then show the video. I really wanted to make this a special video that I can look back on and you know with it being a longer video i just kind of wanted to make it more of a special video get absolutely everything out of the way that i want to say so again everyone who's watching this thank you very much if the technical guy who was managing the call sees this and if peter cullen sees this thank you from the bottom of my heart till all are one Daniel. Hi. Hey, Daniel. how are you? Daniel Griffin, that's a famous name. <laughs> how are you? I'm great. And you? I'm good, thank you. Yeah. Um, I've been waiting since I was eight years old to, uh, to actually call you. Um, I always said to myself that if I ever got the chance to meet you, I would say how much of an impact the, especially the Michael Bay movies, but like your version of Optimus in the Michael Bay films. It's actually impacted me um, because Optimus in them films goes through so many deep emotions and he always comes out on top and never gives up and I just wanted to say those movies and, and that uh, interpretation of Optimus that you gave uh, really has saved my life more times than once and I want to say thank you so much. Wow. Whoa. Wow. Honestly. <laughs> yeah, you're, well, that, thank you. Daniel, thank you very much. Those are, those are deep words, and uh, I take yeah. them to heart. Uh, Daniel Griffin, thank you. That <laughs> thank you, and, and thank you to, to your brother Larry. Oh, um, yeah. and, and because of that, I've actually gone on to uh, make my own like, Transformers stop motions, uh, where I, from my own experiences, I create my own story. So if I've been in a, a situation, I'll put like Optimus Prime in that situation and see how he handles it. Um, on my YouTube channel, Transform from myself. <laughs> well, you know, we're not so not so different because my older brother, by 13 months, we grew up together. And uh, Larry was always, you know, taller. Um, and uh, my bigger brother, but we were the same. You know, we played catch together. We did everything together. 
until a certain period in our lives, you know, when we went off. Uh, I was still in grade school, he was in high school, and see that extra jump just separates you. And then it's high school, college, that's a completely uh, different segment. So that kind of separates you. But all during that period of time, I always had my brother Larry to look up to and emulate. Uh, yeah. Times when I would say, what would Larry do? Um, yeah. And a lot of brothers do that. And uh, I've noticed that. And it's been pointed out to me over the years. And it's a wonderful thing. And it's like a father-son relationship, too. You can see that power of influence. And that, to me... Yeah. Now, Daniel, I'm very grateful for you, you know, saying those words. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I always, I, I wanted to ask as well, is there a story of Optimus Prime that you've always wanted to be told but haven't been told yet? <laughs> I don't know. No, I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> well, not really. You know, I was talking to a, a fan prior to you and and I had mentioned that there's a Bible about the Transformers that's this thick. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> and so they can literally command uh, and apply another theory or another part of the Transformers uh, epic, imaginative, you know, story. There is, it seems to be nothing you can't do with a vehicle. Yeah. Like and as long as they keep that sense of honesty and, uh, you know, objectivity, and uh, I think they, 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 it'll be around for a while. Who's to say? I mean, you know, all I can do is rust. <laughs> <laughs> and then scan a new form. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, uh, where are you calling from? Uh, the United Kingdom, England. Where? <laughs> um, in uh, in Derbyshire. Derbyshire. I love England. I love yeah. England. Recently in Liverpool, and uh, I, 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 there's something magical about England for me, and it's because of the Irish blood that I have. You know, uh, England, Scotland, Ireland, Wales. The, 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 it's magic to me. It's magic to the history. It's so great to be able to talk with you like this. This is great. Yeah. yeah like I said, I, I always want to meet you, and I was actually meant to uh, meet you at TF Nation for the uh, before COVID hit. Um, yeah, I know. We were and I got cancelled. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I'm just glad to have the opportunity to meet you here as well. How far are you from Manchester? Um, I think about two hours. That's not, I have nothing, everything's close. Well, I hope I see you at a con in in England or Scotland or wherever they have it. Yeah. Daniel Griffin, it would be a hell of an honor to meet you there. <laughs> well, it's been an honor meeting you as well, so thank you so much. Oh, me, my pleasure. We gotta have a picture taken. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> you ready? Uh, ready, here we go. Three, yeah, two, thank you. one. Perfect, thank you. Oh, toodle-doo, as they say. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Hey, thanks, Daniel.